Hi. Okay, folks, welcome to Me Made May Day 22. Um, so this is where I, hi, I'm Simone. And this is where I record my Me Made outfits for May because I'm challenging myself to every day talk about my Me Made wardrobe, which I have realized for winter is quite a capsule wardrobe. And um, today, I've probably gotten slightly more adventurous with my choices, trying to mix and match things. We're getting towards the end of the month. I might be getting slightly desperate for new ideas. But also, since it's lockdown life, maybe I just don't need to deal with the public's opinion of what I'm wearing. So I'm wearing things that are slightly crazier. Maybe, 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 maybe. Anyway, I'll go through the outfit in a second, but you've seen most of the pieces before. Um, and then... Finally, I can do this Lush Fabrics haul. So yeah, I bought some pieces from Lush Fabrics and I'm just going to show you what they are um, and what my plans are. Alright, first up, the shirt you've seen before. Um, it's a simplicity pattern. It's probably the closest to the original pattern. It was the first one that I did. I have done three of those more severely hacked than the others. So yeah, there's this guy here. Um, with a slightly longer sleeve. I think that's the only change I made from memory. And I made a... Was it a size 8 or a size 10? I can't remember, but it was a small one. It'll be in the other video. Look it up. Um, just find the one that's Simplicity 8736 review, I think. I think. Uh, <laughs> the pants are from the Gertie Jane set. Um... I did, uh, like, the fabric is really, really stretchy, which is much stretchier than is recommended by Gertie for making her stuff. So I did do quite a lot of alterations to these to get them to fit. Like they're quite a bit shorter in the waist. Um, and But if I was going to do them again, now that I'm wearing them with this thick belt, which I really quite like, I would probably raise the waist back up again, not do a waistband, but um, do a um, facing with elastic in it, and then put some big belt loops on so I can wear it with this kind of big 50s belt much more successfully because at the moment it's really slipping out the back. I mean the fact that this has got this button placket um, is kind of easing up as well. This short shirt is quite short. It's difficult to tuck in even if it's like 1950s with high-waisted skirts uh, and one of the later ones I did I just cut it short and then did um, I don't know a band a button up band so it would sit over the top at this size and I wouldn't have to tuck it in at all. And that saves on fabric and instead of making it really, really long and then being able to tuck it in. And I am wearing, this is my crazy edition, um, these velvet stirrup socks. <laughs> I don't know if you can see them. Pulled in over the top of my pants. Do, do, do. Yay. <laughs> uh, and they're from the collection. So, um, if you like those, they're from the Goblin Fruit collection. Oh man, I, I did my first major workout since lockdown last night. I did an F45. My legs, just not good. <laughs> so much pain. Um, shoulders as well. And I've got another class booked in for Saturday morning, so this will be fun. This will be fun. All right, so Lush Fabrics. Uh, Lush Fabrics, I sort of found them, I mean I found them a little while ago but I really kind of got into it about two weeks ago and I started really stalking their website. Um, I'm always whinging and complaining that there are not enough fabric suppliers here in Perth. I mean there's no, like very few like wholesalers and it depends what kind of work that you're doing but it can be really difficult to source fabric here. So I thought since I'd found this independent business based in Perth, but they're online, um, that I would find, I would support them, i.e. I would buy stuff and justify it as supporting a small business, because that's how I roll. Um, but also the thing that I loved about them is that they specialize in, in knits, and obviously I really like working with knits, um, and lots and lots of prints. and. I have a great wholesaler for like sweater knits and stuff like that um, with that are wool blend so I mean I really do prefer a natural fiber and um, yeah so I can get these wholesale they're wool blend but they're not in prints they're just plain colors so the fact that these guys were in prints I thought was really exciting 
Um, I was originally going to do an unboxing and um, when it arrived last night, I'd ripped it open and it was too late. <laughs> I'd ripped it open before I'd even walked in the door because um, I was a bit excited. Um, but I'm kind of glad I didn't do the unboxing because now I've actually washed everything and they feel a lot better. I know, I think I've said in previous videos, I don't wash fabrics, um, pre-wash them. I like to kind of keep the stabilizers in them, which makes them easier to cut and to sew. Um, but when I first reached into these, when I bought it, I was like, Ew. oh, I don't know. I mean, number one, they're synthetic knits and I prefer natural, but also they just, it kind of felt weird. And so my unboxing video would have been a little bit underwhelmed, but spoiler alert, I love them now because I've washed them. <laughs> and like, there's a little card in here. I mean, the thing that sort of prompted me on, okay. So it comes with this little card, um, which is really, really cute. Lush fabrics, blah, blah, blah. Um, and it says, we recommend washing and drying your fabric. Kind of like straight up, like they're, they're telling you to wash it. And they also give you um, a dye catcher in the package. Um, so I was like, okay, they really want you to wash it. And I, I don't know what it is, what stabilizers or whatever are being used to make these, but it was sticky and yuck and now it's gone. And now they're beautiful. They're so beautiful. So <laughs> um, I'll show you what I've got and I'll tell you what my plans are. And my number one favorite is this one. Um, they do seem to specialize in florals and a lot of really large scale florals. I mean, they do have natural fibers, but most of those are really plain. Um, so I went for prints. Where did I put my little sheet where I wrote down everything that's in these things? Oh, it's here. Um, all right, so this is a Liverpool. Um, and I was kind of nervous about it because it's got this, like Liverpool knit has a crepe texture. Can we do a thing where you can see? I don't know if you can see, but this is, it's called English Rose. Um, doo, doo, doo. I like the thickness, like it's just a cream reverse. Um, it's quite thick. I mean, it's not thick, thick. Some of them, I was somehow expecting them to be thicker, even though the weights are listed on there, and I know perfectly well what the weights mean. For some reason, I expected them to be thicker. I don't know. Um, anyway, okay, so this is English Rose. It's a Liverpool. It's 97% polyester, 3% spandex. It's 180 GSM and it's only got a, a horizontal stretch, so a one-way stretch, 80%, which is big, pretty big. Um, now, I got this because um, <laughs> this might, might not be a reference that everybody will get. But I, I don't know if you can remember a show maybe 10 or 12 years ago called True Blood. It was like a vampire show. Sexy vampire show. As you do. Um, and in the first season, um, in the first season, Vampire Bill takes Suke to her first vampire bar in Shreveport. And it has to be said like that because that, that's his ridiculous accent. <laughs> I don't think it's real. Is it real? Does he actually talk like that? That actor, the old man, I don't know. Um, but she wears a white dress with red roses. And he says, he either says you look like fresh meat or you look like vampire bait, which I thought was hilarious because I actually already owned pretty much the exact same dress as she was wearing. Like a 1950s low cleavage, fit and flare, um, it was cotton, white cotton with red roses dress that was like all booby. Um, which I loved and I wore it all the time. So it was like my, my vampire bait dress. Um, I s actually still have the dress, but it doesn't really fit me anymore. Um, like I can get it on, but I don't know. Like I've probably gone up a size in the body, but for some reason the boobs have gone up three sizes. Like they're just... Too much. I mean, maybe it was always too much and I was just in denial back then, but 12 years later, <laughs> the denial has faded. <laughs> it does not look that great. Um, but yes, so this one though, I was thinking of doing. Now, I thought I'd do a sketch because um, you might not understand what I'm talking about. Just, just, just to make it clearer. 
Alrighty, so I'm thinking a wanted tea hack into a dress. Um, so, and you need, need to help me with this. The square neckline of the wanted tee, but with full sleeves, like the hack that I've done before, but I think I might make the sleeve head bigger so it pops up. This fabric's quite springy, so I can do that. This is a very quick sketch, guys. Um, yeah, no, no judging. <laughs> no judging. Um, and then maybe just, yeah, like the elastic. I'm not really into a full, full length sleeve. Um, now I can't decide if to make it short, which in winter I'll have to wear it with tights, which will probably be black tights, and that's a little bit 90s for me, I think, maybe. I don't know. Tell me what you think. Or I can do it really, really long, and then I'll probably have to buy a little bit more fabric to do a big ruffle across the bottom. I actually don't really know how well this fabric will do the ruffle. I don't think it's got enough weight to it. It's quite bouncy. Anyway, maybe it'll have to be the short. Tell me what you think. Tell me what you think. Well, that's my plans for that one. All right. Fabric number two. This is a sweater knit. It's Robin in burgundy. I only got a meter of this um, because I was like, I don't want to go too heavy on the florals. I mean, I love all the florals, but I, I want some things for my wardrobe that I wear more often, says the girl standing here wearing florals. It's not, this is more abstracty floral though, whereas this is folly floral. Folly floral. Um, okay, Robin in Burgundy, it's 96% polyester, 4% spandex, 180 GSM, 80% um, horizontal strength, stretch, and 25% vertical stretch. And it's roses. Ta-da! Like these. Um, white on the back side. I'm showing the wrong side. There we go. This is what it looks like. Pretty, right? Pretty roses and stretchy. And I am thinking cardigan. Um, it'll make a really. It's, it's only a meter, but I think it'll make a really cute little cardigan. And I want to do a high neck. This is what. I want. Something like that. So, and I'm also thinking I could even be able to hack this shirt pattern into a cardigan. Um, so the high neck, so it's got the same gathers, like drop front shoulder and gathers, but obviously put a button placket down the front for it to be a cardigan, um, and then a band across the bottom, and then a long full sleeve. Um, the original pattern for this shirt, like, oh sorry, has another version with a long sleeve. So I could just do this other version, but instead of having the buttons down the back, I'll just hack it so the buttons are down the front and then shorten it and put a band on it. It'll depend how much fabric I've got for these sleeves, really. They're fairly all encompassing, these sleeves. Um, I mean, I also quite like these inserted lace. Mm, that'd be too much with the floral. Forget that idea. Um, yeah, so maybe this, but as a cardigan. Um, or my other idea, I, this is for a woven and it's lined, but I reckon I can make it work. I reckon I can. I mean, the other one's for a woven as well. And I made that one for a jersey already, so I know I can make it work. Um, this little jacket, uh, which is a lined little cropped turnover. I mean, I do really like Gertie um, on her Patreon, I think. She's done a... Peter Pan collar bolero. That's also really cute. That's also an idea for that floral might be really cute. Anyway, tell me what you think. Okay, that's number two. Number three, and we're getting, the, the rest are kind of checks and tartans. So florals are over. This one, this one kind of threw me a bit when I saw it. I expected, the, I don't know what you're seeing exactly there. The yellow is slightly more mustard than I thought it was going to be, but that's fine. Um, this is called Tracy's Tartan. It's 94% polyester. It's a French terry. 94% polyester, 3% rayon, 3% spandex, and 200 GSM. 
And because it's a French terry, I kind of expected it to be a bit heavier. Um, so this is the French terry that I had before, and I'll, I'll show you. This is why it kind of threw me, because it's not that heavy. Like, I don't know. I mean, how do you tell? Like, you know, it's... Mm, it's stretchy that way. Um, but this, this is a French terry that I got from Spotlight. Um, I don't know if you can see, like, what the difference is like. But I just kind of expected it to be more like this. Like, the loops are really, um, like, they're longer. They're more defined. They're more like a towel. This is, I mean, this has got flocking on it as well, which makes it even thicker. Um, and not as much stretch at all. Um, and this, the loops, like, they're quite thin. Like, they're small. Um, I just really wouldn't, I don't know if I would class this as a French terry. But it's lovely. It's still lovely. Um, of course, I mean, I've mentioned this before. People call fabrics different things all the time. Um, and one name can mean lots of different things. So that's probably my issue with um, buying online. It's not very... F fabrics are not very specific. I mean, like, different places all over the world have made particular fabrics and they all make them a little bit different. And so you get this big bunch of things that just get one name and they're all quite a bit different. So that's what it is. Anyway, I was going, cause what I was gonna do with this is dun, 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 through the pile here, yeah, this dress. And I don't know if it's heavy enough. Um, I don't know if anybody's made this one before, this kind of 1960s number, but I thought because it's got all these little gathers at the waist and I've seen some other people online make it, um, that you could, that it would distort the check. And so, and I like that. I like the idea that the check would then sort of move around the body and the lines would look different. Um, I don't know, like for checks and things, I actually really like gathers and, you know, flourishes of fabric um, to make those sort of lines kind of move. Like, I like that. Um, yeah, so that was my original plan for this. If you think it'll work, tell me you think it'll work. I'm like, um, no, I can give it a go. I give it a go. Um, then this one. I mean, these, these last two, I've got a whole bunch of ideas, but no firm plans. Um, this is the... Susanna, it's a single brush poly, 96% polyester, 4% spandex, and 170 GSM. And it's really soft. <laughs> I mean, I didn't buy any of their double brush polys. This is just the single, because I didn't hit on one of the double brushed ones. I really thought about it that I really liked. Um, but this is just gorgeous. It just feels so nice. Um, it feels like, um, it, like flannelette. Um, but synthetic flannelette. And cotton flannelette is actually quite a low quality fabric. So like brushed cottons, the integrity of the cotton is compromised with the brushing. Um, so this would be a longer lasting version of flannelette maybe. I mean, you know, it would make amazing pajamas. I'm probably not about to make myself pajamas. Um, so kind of my idea with this is just a really, um, fairly basic tube dress, like that sort of thing. I mean, after just saying with all the checks and things I want to have gathers, this would just be very plain, straight up and down. Probably lower that um, armhole size so you can get some volumes in the top of the arm and just to um, make the how narrow it goes more obvious. Um, more defined shape there and a roll neck. Um, but between this one and the next one, there's actually some other ideas, which I'll show you and you can tell me what you think. But this next one is dun, 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 the last one. This is a red buffalo plaid. It's a sweater knit, 60, 
96% polyester, 4% spandex, 180 GSM, um, 75% horizontal stretch and 50% vertical stretch. Um, and it's a great shade of red. Look at that. It's my shade of red. It's fantastic. Very vibrant. And you know, like lots and lots of gathers. We'll get, get our Vivian Westwood on. What do you think? I mean, seriously, just wrap it around myself and walk down the street. We'll be fine. It's really soft. Um, so this is a sweater knit I think is quite different from the other sweater knit. So this was the other sweater knit. I don't know. Like this is soft and feels a lot more like that single brush poly and quite light compared to this one, which isn't unsoft, but it's not as that brushed flannelette feeling. Um, it's just more like a standard tight weave knit feeling, which I normally expect from a sweater knit. Whereas this is like ultra, ultra tight for a sweater knit, this knit. Super fine. Um, and see how heavy it's draping. I mean, this one is not as much of it, but... Doo -doo. Like it's got weight. Not so much. Anyway. Um, right, so, plans. Let's just try and wear it. Oh, this is a good look. Okay. Seriously. Just a shawl. I'll be fine. Let's go. Those buffalo girls go around the outside. Oh, that's an old reference. Showing my age there. Um, okay. Alrighty. Nope, we've talked about that one. Um, okay, there is the Gertie wrap knit that I have. This one tends to be fabric hungry because the the front knit panels are double sided but I could put a different fabric on the back I've got other plain knits that I could use so that's idea number one for either of these two tart like the buffalo check or the red tartan um nope <laughs> discarded already um now this one would be a hack again um so this is a very popular pattern heaps of people have made this um, but obviously it's a woven and I'd be doing a hack for a knit. Um, but yes, the crossover bodice, the pop a long sleeve on it. Um, and then, I mean, this is bias cut. I think I'd still bias the check so that they ran the other way and crisscrossed over and then make it a, quite a bit longer. Hmm. Crossover bodice, long dress with long sleeves, maybe. Um, this one, work with me. Um, there's another summer woven. I wouldn't do the gathered skirt. I would do a fitted tube skirt. Um, but then this guy's got all these really interesting panels. I'll show you. So because it's converted from a halter, I think, into having sleeves and a back, there's all these interesting different pieces, which I think the check moving around in place differently could be interesting. Just... I think I'd close up that center front seam there on the underbust. So yeah, okay, that idea. That's a Butterick idea. The other idea was the McCall's idea. Um, this 80s dress top, this is style variations. See these full on 80s sleeves? I'm really gonna have to adjust the shoulders to take out those shoulder pads. And then the pussy bow blouse, maybe, in one of these checks. Okay, um, vintage Butterick idea. Um, this pussy bow blouse dress. I mean, even this in the yellow check. Again, there's no gathers on that. But that idea. Um, this is, again, another very popular pattern. It's very easy Vogue wrap dress. I don't think I'm going to have enough fabric for these. Maybe the, mm, 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 mm. and I'd make it a longer sleeve because winter, but it does have all these shoulder gathers and some volume, which I think would look really cute in the checks. Um, and then the last one is this 80s simplicity. Is it 80s? 70s maybe? No, I reckon it's 80s. Definitely 80s. Um, just the top, this kind of squared off boat neck. I think is really interesting. And then this is what I was talking about before, these sort of dropped arm size sleeves that are yeah, heavy there and then go into a more defined narrow arm 
It is the... No, the line drawing shows you nothing. Um, yeah. Do you know? What do you think? What do I do? Um, anyway, it's my Lush Fabrics. I'm just going to walk around the house wearing them. It'll be fine. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'll link to Lush Fabrics below if you want to go and explore what they do. Okay. Thank you. See you guys. Oop. Oop. Oh, gosh. Coordinated.